Hey, what's up? Slunts Joker here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sound Blaster E5 by Creative. The E5 is a USB DAC and portable headphone amplifier with the capability of pushing 24-bit 192kHz high resolution audio. Adding to that, more features than I've seen on any other DAC in the market, and you have what on paper looks like it could be a dream for audiophiles and gaming enthusiasts alike. Let's start this thing off with what comes in the box just so you know what you'll be getting if you decide to pick up the E5. Opening up the colorful box, you'll gracefully meet the E5 in a velvet feeling top layer and a padded lid to help protect the unit. There is also an accessory box which includes a nice looking red USB to mini USB cable, a mini toss link cable, a stand with an option to use the threaded mount for mic stands, two elastic bands, and finally your various pieces of literature that you would expect to come with a device like this. The body is extremely sturdy but not heavy. Its rigid exterior, matte finish, and rubber padded base give the whole unit a really nice look and feel. The rubber base with sound blaster insignia is especially nice as it meant that I did not have to put on rubber feet myself to prevent slippage, like I've seen included with other DACs. The various physical features of the E5 include dual 3.5mm headphone jacks at the front, along with a large volume knob with no visual indicator on the device itself for your current audio level, but thankfully that is handled nicely on the screen by the included software, which I'll touch on later. The left side doesn't have any external features, but coming over to the right side, we have a power button with LED indicator when powered on, which also serves as a Bluetooth pairing button. You also have a button for toggling on or off the SBX Pro Studio software. There's also a switch for going between low or high gain, and lastly, three LEDs towards the rear to indicate how much is left in the available eight hours of battery life. At the back of the unit, there's a port for line, mic, or optical inputs, a line or optical output, USB host connection, and finally, micro USB for charging the device. To wrap up the outside of the E5, we have three microphones on the top which help the E5 adjust the pickup based on its orientation to where sound is coming from. However, it should be noted that only two of the three mics are ever in operation at any one time. So as you can see by the extensive amount of features on the body, there is a lot of options that cater to just about everyone from desktop to mobile users and from gamers to pure audiophiles. There's enough here to serve everyone and to serve them well. One might think that with all these features the audio quality might have been sacrificed, so let's see just how the E5 stacks up in terms of how it sounds. I'm happy to report that the audio quality is top notch. As a gamer I appreciated the lows being slightly more prominent, especially in something like Battlefield 4 with big explosions going off all the time. Also listening to various house and hip hop tracks really made the E5 shine. The mids and highs weren't as refined, so for someone that may be listening to rock, country, or metal, the E5 might not fit your specific needs. Now that isn't to say that I couldn't enjoy rocking out to some Metallica, but it was missing that crunch that I looked for when listening to heavier tracks. The majority of my listening was done via the included mini toss link cable but I did also run it for a day on the micro USB just to get an idea of what the sound quality would be like for those of you out there that maybe don't have access to optical outputs on your motherboard, sound card, or laptop. I did notice some slight variance when switching between the two in a blind test, and I did lean towards the optical cable. It seemed to deliver a crisper sound overall, but that isn't to say that the USB option is a bad one. It still sounded very good, and there was very little discernible difference between the two. I was happy to see the E5 really break out in terms of sheer amplification power. The spec sheet lists that it offers enough juice to power 600 ohm impedance headphones. It definitely lives up to this as this bad boy can deliver some serious horsepower. I had no trouble at all powering any of my headphones that I tested, which ranged from generic Apple earbuds to mid-range 50 ohm headphones and a pair of higher end 250 ohm headphones. I do also want to briefly touch on the Bluetooth and NFC functionality. If wireless is more your thing, then Creative has you covered. You can stream your music wirelessly to Bluetooth headphones, speakers, or mobile devices that support NFC with one-touch pairing. Overall, I found the audio quality to be par for the course without anything really negative or positive to say about my wireless experience. The included software suite from Creative is a very nice touch as well. This gives you a lot of options to tweak the sounds to your needs. Most of the time I found myself not using a lot of the stuff in here, as I prefer my audio to be as close to the source as possible. Thankfully Creative didn't overdo it, as most of the sound options in here are meant to really just enhance your listening experience. The crystallizer option was one of my favorites as it lived up to its description by making music seem much livelier. You can even go into a surround mode if you want total immersion during gaming or watching movies. 
In addition to the mixer and equalizer, we also have a tab in here for the included crystal voice technology. This can be utilized when taking voice calls, recording audio, or even chatting with friends online via Skype, TeamSpeak, or Ventrilo. You will also be able to have a little novel fun at your friend's expense as you can switch on the fly to different sound effects that will alter your voice. I found this to be a very cool and very fun feature. As I mentioned earlier, the SBX Pro Studio options can be quickly toggled on and off from a button on the right side of the E5. This is very convenient if you are transitioning between various types of media and don't want to go into your software to turn it on or off. Also, once you have your drivers installed and you use the volume knob, you will get this really nice on-screen display to indicate your current volume level. It is this seamless level of integration between hardware and software that I feel makes the E5 stand out among the pack. In conclusion, I really enjoyed spending time with the E5 DAC amp from Creative. I look forward to it being a staple on my desk for a really long time. So whether you're a gamer, audiophile, mobile user, or just want something to take your audio to the next level, then you should take notice of the E5. The included features like SBX Pro, Bluetooth NFC functionality, and Creative Software Suite are all icing on the cake of what would have already been a good DAC and headphone amplifier. But that's going to wrap it up for the video guys. If you want more information or links to where you can get the Sound Blaster E5, please check down in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're not already. Also, if you want to keep up with what I'm doing or help contribute to future videos, you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Joker Slunt. I'll catch you guys next time. Turn up!